Elise here at Bowman Library with a whole new middle grade book spotlight. So this week, we are exploring some historical fiction. That's right, we are taking a look at some stories that are fiction, they're made up, but they're based on times in history, real people, real events, they tie facts in with some fiction. And what I love about historical fiction is I honestly believe there was a little bit of something for everyone because not only does it include some history, but a lot of times there's either a suspense element or there's a mystery or there's even maybe a little bit of romance or yeah, there's just little snippets of all different other genres and different types of books that find themselves in historical fiction. So we have six titles we're gonna take a look at today that take place through all different times in our history. So let's get started. Our first one is Sophia's War. So living in New York City in 1776, Sophia is there when the British take over the city and when her older brother William joins George Washington's army. The only way her family is allowed to stay in their house is they have to let British officers stay there. And what, what kind of gets tough with Sophia is as these British officers stay there that she's not supposed to like, she honestly kind of starts to like them as people. When her brother is captured by the British though and she dies on a prisoner ship three years later, Sophia's opinions change and she offers, she volunteers to become a spy for, for you know, George Washington's army. And she's placed as a maid in the house of Major Clinton's headquarters. It's there in this house that she overhears that they start this discussion of the surrender of West Point by the then Patriot Commander Benedict Arnold. And it's going to be up to Sophia to get this information out to, to, the, to the people who need to know in order to stop the downfall and surrender of the American army. This fast-paced, action-packed thriller is one that will keep you on the edge of your seat while also seeing what war was really like and life was like for individuals during the American Revolution. This is Sophia's War. Prairie Lotus. After her mother passes away at age 14, Hannah and her father decide they're, they want a fresh start. So they naturally then go out to what's the, then known as the Dakota Territory. When they settle in this town of La Forge, it's not going to be easy for a number of reasons, one of which they weren't really expecting is the barrage of racism they face, especially as Hannah is half Chinese. Her mother was Chinese and her father was white, and it is 1880, and that is just not accepted by a lot of people. Hannah is just hoping that she can go to school and she can make friends, but as she goes to school, parents pull their children out of school, boycotting that she's even allowed to be there because of how she looks. Her father tries to open a general store that's boycotted because Hannah is her daughter, is his daughter, and one time she's out running errands for him and she's she's physically attacked and hurt. Hannah decides though that she is not going to let that stop her or her father and it's going to be up to her to change the mindset of the people in this town they have chosen to live in. Now, if you like reading books that take place on the frontier, you know, you think Little House on the Prairie, Oregon Trail type stuff, this is a great choice. It features this incredible strong female character with a time in our history and, and, and this, I, this focus on, on the way some people dealt with even at a time like that, which is not normally discussed in schools, in history books, in classes. Incredibly eye-opening, well done by Linda Supar. This is Prairie Lotus. Stella by Starlight. So Stella is growing up in segregated North Carolina in 1932. She loves to sneak out of her house in the middle of the night so she can go off and write by herself. One night though, when she sneaks out, she and her brother witness a Ku Klux Klan meeting. And the KKK or Ku Klux Klan is a group that is against African Americans and can be very dangerous and incredibly violent. As news starts to spread in, in, in town of this group being there, Stella becomes more and more scared of where she is living, but the community she lives in supports everyone and she soon finds herself being able to face her fears while her father 
finally gets to register to vote. This is based on her grandmother's childhood, uh, Sharon Draper, the author here. She's written this incredibly amazing story about how we can support and encourage one another, even in incredible times of adversity and opposition, Stella by Starlight. Moonshine. So it's 1932, same year as our other previous book, but this is a whole completely different take here. So it is 1932 and prohibition is the law of the land. And what prohibition did at this, during this time period, is it made any type of alcohol illegal to be made, sold, or consumed. But the reality is that did not stop people. So couples with his family in rural Tennessee, he and his father, they have made illegal moonshine, which was what they called another word for alcohol at that time, for years in order for his family to be able to survive financially because they made a ton of money off of this. Now at 13, Cobb has never been to school before, but now he needs to go in order for his family not to be caught with their illegal activity and arrested. Now, Things come to a head though when a mobster or a gangster they come comes from up north, comes down to where they live, and Cub steps in and tries to help his father during a conflict. It's during this conflict though that Cub's father is severely injured in an accident, and now they have to figure out a way to get out of the mess they find themselves in. And it's gonna be up to Cub. Must be realistic here. Now. This is an incredible look at a time that's not normally discussed in books, okay? We are, I, we're not reading a lot of books that take place in 1932 and like the in rural Tennessee, okay, about illegal activity here. But you will find yourself cheering for Cub and his father, even though what they are doing is illegal. But as you're reading it, you kind of understand why they're doing it. And you may even, again, find yourself supporting and cheering for them. This is moonshine. Dash. So I will tell you this right now, I, I do not do animal books. I very rarely talk about animal books and the only time I do, I promise, there was a good outcome. Okay, so I will just tell you that right now. So Mitzi is a Japanese American girl living in Seattle when the unspeakable happens. And that is when in 1941, Pearl Harbor is bombed by Japanese airmen. This ends up getting the United States involved in World War II and it also created a lot of tensions within the United States, especially with how people viewed the Japanese American community. Mitzi finds herself being shunned by friends, looked down upon, not trusted, just because she's Japanese American. But through all of this, she has her incredible dog, Dash, who is her best friend. The government, though, decides that all Japanese Americans, and I, I, I will preface it with this, this actually really does happen in our history, okay? The government decides that they are going to move all the Japanese Americans into these um, camps where they can all be watched because they don't know what they're gonna do because you know what, yeah. So not only does Mitzi have to leave her home, everything she knows, she's only allowed to bring like one suitcase with her. The worst part is she cannot bring her dog, Dash. Her neighbor, Mrs. Belper, she decides, you know, she offers that she will watch Dash. And as Mitzi, you know, because as Mitzi's going to be away, yeah. The only way Mitzi gets through these camps is by writing letters to Dash. You will find yourself falling in love with both Dash and Mitzi. You will you will be cheering for them the whole time, hoping, again, I promise, for a happy ending. There is a second book in this series with another dog during World War II. So if you like this one, there is another one. This is Dash. And our last one is The Evolution of Calpurnia Tate. It's the beginning of the 1900s and 11 year old Calpurnia is expected to become a lady. She should be interested in learning in clothes, sewing, cooking, and other things like that, but she has zero interest. She would rather be conducting science experiments with her grandfather. But that's like, that's something like, like girls weren't allowed to do. What her grandfather encourages though in her scientific endeavors, she ends up discovering a plant that no one else has ever seen before. And they send this plant off, her finding, to the Smithsonian Institute for confirmation. 
as she's waiting for this, Calpurnia is trying to make everyone happy and she doesn't really know what to tell her, like how to tell her mother what she really honestly wants. And she has all, she has this incredible in, internal conflict about what's expected of her and who, who she really wants to be. And then there's external conflicts and this is all about trying to stay true to who you are at a time when it wasn't really accepted. Now, this book is all about being strong, finding out who you really are, following your passions. There is a sequel to this book that is already out as well. So if you read it, when you read it, you're going to fall in love with Calpurnia Tate. You're going to want to read the next one to continue on her adventure as she like decides she's going to go into science instead of what society expects of her. This is the evolution of Calpurnia Tate. So these are six of the books we have here at the library that are historical fiction. Again, they're all throughout history. There's little pieces of everything. We got some science. We got some, we got one has science in it. Staying true to yourself. We got some romance. We got some mystery. We got some suspense. We got some family drama. Like, there's a little bit of something here for everyone. So I encourage you to come on out. Check out one of these. Or I can promise, I can guarantee you actually, that there are plenty of other historical fiction books. So we can help you find whichever that perfect one is you're looking forward to read. I hope you have an amazing week and I hope you tune back next week with a whole new middle grade book spotlight.